Hello and welcome to the Self-Recording Band Podcast. I am your host, Benedict Hein. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Thank you for checking us out. If you're already a listener, thank you for coming back. We really appreciate you. Today, I am not here with Malcolm Owen Flood, as usual, but I'm here with two of my Self-Recording Syndicate members, Robin Beckman and Clint Carr. Welcome. Uh, hey. Hey. Hello. Those two have joined the coaching program, the Self-Recording Syndicate, about a year and like not a half ago, but like I think 14 months or so, early 2022. And since then, we've been working together, and the two of them are great musicians, engineers. Um, they collaborate, because so they are starting their own studio together, actually, or have been doing that for a while, which is very interesting. We're going to talk about that. They play in a band together called Snakes in the Pit. Uh, they have multiple projects going on, like too many for me to list in this intro, so I'm going to let them do it themselves. Uh, they are overall like very creative, active people in the music scene, do various projects. And I'm, I'm super stoked to have them on the show because they have many exciting things to share. They've been crushing it. They have been submitting really good, good work, um, great mixes, great recordings. They've been working with exciting artists. And I can't wait to tell you their story or let them tell you their story. And so, yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for coming to the podcast. Yeah, yes. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. It's a great honor. And we're <laughs> very happy to be here. Yeah. Awesome. So cool. So uh, I, I think I forgot to mention the studio name. Uh, it's called Ruby Records, right? Yeah, that's correct. Mm. It might be a bit misleading because it's obviously called Records and we're just a recording facility more or less. But it's part of our story because Robin and I have been making music together, I don't know, probably since we were 10 or something. So yeah. that would be almost 20 years. And <laughs> we've always been dreaming of doing this. So we're super stoked to finally be at this point. And it's been the name that we saved our files <laughs> as back then <laughs> in like 2000. Six, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So, so uh, we we know that it's for a studio, sort of a misleading name, but we still wanted to go that way because we wanted to, it to be as authentic as possible. And that's just what we've always been dreaming of. Awesome. So you, you guys have been friends for, for a very long time. Um, yes. This is what I'm getting from that. Yeah. This is very cool. So the, the, different, the main difference, I just want to tell people real quick, the main difference between you and many of the other um, syndicate members that we have is that you are not just doing it as a hobby, but you're actually turning this into a career. Um, it's, I think at, the, at this point, it's, it's a side thing sort of for both of you. So you do multiple projects and you have other, other jobs also in the creative um, sort of field, but you do other things as well, but you are a little more um, ambitious when it comes to your mu music career compared to like the people who do it just for self-actualization, which is totally fine too, but there's a little more to it in your case. So before we met, before we decided, before you decided to sign up for the syndicate, give me a quick rundown of what things look like for you as producers, mixers, and, and self-recording artists. Like what have you done the past couple of years? What was your journey? And have you guys, when, when did you guys decide to collaborate and, and build the studio together? All right. So I think it all started from back in the day when what I was just mentioning that we were playing together. Robin was playing guitar. I was playing drums and we would be in different bands, you would also play bass occasionally. And we started recording ourselves just like, I don't know, you've been listening to this podcast and you know how it goes. So it's just the typical story that we were always trying to make things sound better. But um, yeah, we sort of, when we finished high school, we sort of went different directions. Although Robin at least chose to um, follow sound related things at least so mm -hmm. yeah um, i don't know yeah i to... um i worked or i'm um I'm still working for a company called uh, toneworks and uh we are doing more like uh, voiceover and general voice acting stuff and um so <laughs> a few years ago i ran into to this um to this niche to this branch um but uh, yeah, I always wanted to do music and together with Clint. So um, yeah, I don't know, three years ago or something like that, we kind of decided to, or Clint kind of uh, decided to go this way. And now we finally met together yeah, to hopefully reach this goal. 
<laughs> it's actually quite funny because uh, I had been looking into recording school possibilities in Germany and then I talked to a befriended engineer who sort of talked me out of it. <laughs> so I did a degree in business administration and for that I moved to a different city in Germany and that's why we sort of, I don't want to say lost track of each other, but... Uh, we were just not playing together or anything like that. Although Robin ended up being our session bassist because I was playing in bands in that city as well. And it's always still been on my mind that I wanted to do music production right when I would finish that degree. So once I was done with it, I interned at a local recording studio for a few months. And then I had another look into different possibilities and I found a public school in Germany and then I started studying music production there in 2018. And that's sort of, yeah, we've never um, lost track of wanting to do this. And um, it's funny because yesterday Robin and I were chatting a little bit and I was l listening to old files and found a message um, that I had sent to him like two years ago and I, <laughs> I s said something like, Ah, and we just need to get that M32, which is the recording desk we're using now. And then we can finally do this thing. And now, two years later, we're already, we're actually doing that. And a lot of those things we've been, we've kept telling each other. And now we're beyond that point, which is really cool. Awesome. This this sounds really great. So, but to, just to 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 make sure I understand this right. So you took the advice of that engineer you talked to, and you didn't go to audio school first. But then you basically ignored the advice again, and you went to audio school. Or is it well, like a different type of school? Yeah, no, no, it's them? a different type of advice. It's not like he entirely talked me out of it. It's more the typical thing. You should have a plan B, which okay. today I'm not really sure if I want to do the same thing again. I also like the idea of not having a plan B. Yeah, me but too. <laughs> since I don't see myself working for a big corporation, yeah. um, it's actually like I don't have a plan B now. Because yeah. I you don't, know, yeah. even if I had to do a different job, it probably wouldn't be working for a huge yeah. Um, yeah, corporation. Yeah, you know, this is a hot topic because I can't, I can't on a, on a like medium like this I, with my audience, I, I can't give advice like don't, do any like formal education, just do whatever you want, you know, and that I can't, I can't do that. That would be irresponsible. But at the same time, I'm a strong believer in not having a plan B and just going after what you want to do. So uh, this is also exactly what I did, but I know that for a lot of people, this will um, lead to failure and I don't want that. So, um, but I also believe that if you put 100% of your time and energy into one thing and you have a clear focus and you have the talent that it takes and the work ethic that it takes, then there's not much that can go wrong. Actually, you, you just have to follow through. So, uh, but I also think that the, the fact that you have this business degree or that you, that you studied this is not a bad thing in your case. If you want to be self-employed, you know, a lot of the things you learn, there probably are not really applicable to what you do. But still, there's probably, I don't know, but th I think there's probably value in it uh, if you want to be self-employed and run a business. So some of those things might actually help you. So it's, I think it does, don't think it was a bad decision. And then studying the or going to audio school again, this was, is this like a different thing. So I, I got it that way that you didn't go to the typical private schools that a lot of people go to, which I also ne wouldn't necessarily recommend, but instead you went to a public school and, 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 and what, what kind of school is that? Like what, what opportunities are there even in Germany to do this? And if you don't yeah. go to the typical big private schools out there. First of all, it's a very awesome thing about Germany that you get the opportunity to study without having to pay tuition fees. So it's, I mean, you have to pay a very small amount, around 300 euros per semester. But it's, I mean, <laughs> if you know yeah. the fees that they have to pay in America, for example, it's it's ridiculous. And um, I went to a proper music school. So, and that was really important to me because I didn't want to just be taught uh, technical stuff like audio engineering, but I wanted to improve as a musician as a whole. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I got to choose music production as my main instrument and all my fellow students, for example, my most of my friends are drummers, so they chose pop drumming. There's also jazz and classic and musical even. And 
my friends, for example, they have drums as their main instrument, and then you have to have another harmony instrument. So most chose piano. And in my case, <clears throat> I got to choose two instruments plus my actual main instrument, instrument was music production. So I got like one and a half hours of one-on-one -on -one music production lesson per week plus 45 minutes of, well, I didn't pick drumming. I picked piano as my main instrument. So I got 45 minutes of piano and 30 minutes of guitar as my second instrument, which is incredible. I mean, think about that. Plus, you get to um, participate in the whole musician and uh, the college life where you also get to play in different bands. Like every semester, you need to pick one band. I started with a reggae combo where the um, teachers are... In that case, it was the musical director for Sammy Deluxe who taught us. So that's a huge uh, German... Um, band and you get to work with those people and just make music together and that was something I was that was very important to me to be able to better myself as a musician rather than just EQing for, <laughs> and <laughs> dialing in compressors for three years or whatever yeah and uh, yeah I think the connections you you got from from your uh, time there are very big well uh, for very very big value for us and uh, that's also great that you met so many um producers there and people who are doing music uh their whole life and yeah we can really benefit from that that's great yeah one other thing i, I found very interesting about the whole thing is to actually know where you are within the music scene because i always thought of myself as a decent drummer and then I spent one year in Florida going to a high school there and all of a sudden everyone <laughs> including the 13 13 year old kid would just I mean I to this day I haven't seen anyone play that well and uh, <laughs> um, just knowing that those people I mean they only accept like four people per semester per instrument and there's a lot of people applying for those uh, music schools but it's awesome to be part of that community and to actually know that you're not as bad as you might think or you're probably not as good as you might think but you sort of know what you can sell yourself as because you got the comparison which is awesome yeah yeah very cool so there's a couple of things to unpack here because what i That, that's actually cool that you told uh, the story that because that was something that I would have asked um, for anyways because I think the fact that you are and I'm talking to you Clint right now the fact that you um, put a lot of time and energy into being becoming a better musician versus just the engineering side of things is was a really really good idea and I really believe that anyone even like Even if you're not a professional musician and you just want, quote unquote, just want to be an engineer or producer, you have to be a good musician to be able to do that properly because you have to be able to speak the language of musicians. You have to be able to understand music in a, in a non-technical way, in a creative way. And, um, and the ability to just show something versus explaining something to people is, is huge if you work with artists. And then obviously you have, a, um, be, being a good musician means you have... Um, a different creative sort of angle and a different way of approaching things, I think. And and what I find interesting is that the two of you, you're combining pretty cool skill sets that complement each other very well because, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but Robin, you, you are a musician too and I'm not saying that you can't, <clears throat> you're, not, you're not a good musician, but I think you are more the technical person in this collaboration. I think you, maybe I'm wrong here, but with your, I think your editing um, your job where you do a lot of editing, a lot of technical stuff and and the confidence you have using your tools and your DAWs and all of that and maybe also the professional audio environment that you work in. I think that goes really well together with the more, you know, um, a bit, maybe a little less structured but more creative musician type of approach that you have, Clint. So at least that's what I'm observing and I, I can see that work very well that like one of you could be the more creative sort of producer and musician, the other one could be the the engineer doing most of the mixing maybe maybe you know i don't know maybe i'm wrong but this is what it looks like to me and uh 
I think that whenever people collaborate, it's good if they are not exactly good at the same things, but if they have their own, you know, um, if they specialize in different things and they have their own unique strength, strengths that can complement each other. And I think that is the case in your case. And, and so, Robin, I, I'm curious about your musical background, though. I know that you can definitely operate your, your DAW and I know that you, you uh, have all the technical knowledge you need. But what about your musician background? You play in the same band with Clint. I know you play a couple of instruments. And I was honestly blown away by when you first submitted, like when we did the song together, the song from scratch exercise and the coaching where you write, wrote a song from scratch. You wrote it, arranged it, recorded it, mixed it and all of that. And I was blown away by how creative that was, how well it was written and played. And, and the fact that you did it all yourself. And I honestly didn't expect this because, as I said, I always thought of you as more of the technical person. Mm -hmm. But that kind of song that you presented there, that you delivered there, was really, really cool and really unique. So Thanks, I'd man. love to hear more about your <laughs> you. about your personal um, music background there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as you, as you said, uh, I've working um i'm in a band with clint since i don't know uh, actually in different band projects since we are kids and um i'm currently um a guitarist in three bands right now so um as i can think uh, think of i'm playing in bands uh in different projects i've yeah started um playing acoustic guitar i think when i was eight eight years old or so and from there on i improved um, my skills i um i think when i was 18 i gave guitar lessons already so um yeah i'm okay i'm of i'm improving there and yeah, we, Clint and I, did uh, these productions beside of our bands. Mm -hmm. um, we two met together, spending the whole night <laughs> to do different kind of projects. And I think um, because of this, um, because we always did that, uh, I'm kind of... And I don't think talented is is the right uh, word for this, but um, I think it is. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I think so, you're talented. Definitely. Okay, <laughs> so we we teached ourselves to uh -huh. to do like uh, to do music production very very early. Um, it I mean it was for fun there, but uh, I think um, we learned so much from different bands, different projects, and I also. Um, what I also did was um, kind of live mixing for other bands. Uh, I did uh, mixing for for very little festivals and for live streams. And I met um, a lot of people there, talked to them. And um, yeah, just uh, music was always a big thing in my life. And um, yeah. That's cool. kind of the backstory there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, great. So now the, the big question that comes to mind here, and I'm, I pro I'm sure that you're listening to this podcast now, you're asking yourself the same thing. So it, it all sounds perfect. Like you, you've been making music for years. You've been in the music industry even. You've been working in the music industry or the, the audio engineering sort of world at least. Um, then Clint has all these connections and he played in various bands and knows these these people in the music industry. You are you have a background where you you, pr you properly learned your instruments. You went to school to do that. Um, you learned you taught yourself audio production early on and and all those things. So it sounds like the perfect situation and you could just go and use those skills and then build a business out of it and start working and and all this fine and great. So what? where the challenges though if we go back like two years or three years from now like what were the challenges and what was still not quite working for you back then or like because people would be i'm sure people are asking themselves why would you even want to join a coaching program like that or or improve your skills further or what would you want to learn after basically already having years of experience plus the connections and all of that like why didn't it work out immediately and what were you what did you feel like was missing back then still when it comes to skills or knowledge or whatever. Okay, so maybe I'm going to start on this. Um, for me, it was always a matter of, you know, learning music production um, is a little bit different than 
learning to play an instrument in the case that there's so many there's it's such a huge topic you know you could be um focusing on a different genre like in my university we have four different years which uh, with with four different teachers the first one is general recording then we have band recording then we have electronic music then we have film music so just that already tells you that music production is a huge topic and then within that you have all the technical stuff of course which i feel like i'm already quite um sophisticated with but there's mm. also you know mixing mastering plus post-production elements and it's very easy to lose track and sort of um, feel like you're trying different things all the time and uh, putting all your time in it but without really having a clear goal and clear um, milestones that you need to reach in order to actually be um, at a point where you're confident with offering your craft to other people and one thing that goes um even that's a little bit another level but still doesn't make it easy is that if you're a drummer like i was saying earlier you have maybe 20 different drummers in your city that you know and you feel like yeah you're among the top 10 percent and you're confident offering your um skills to a band or whatever And then if you look at the world, you're just <laughs> nothing, you know. You could go on Instagram and feel like, oh, I'm going to quit drumming today. <laughs> and with music production, it's just whatever you do is going to come up right next to your favorite band on Spotify or whatever. And it always sounds weak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least that's what I thought. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> to this date, even mixes I really like, uh, I sort of happened to be played in a playlist with other productions and then I'm like oh it's actually not that good or whatever but um, then I came across Benedict's podcast and his advice on exactly that that I think the the advertisement was something like if you struggle to um, get your mixes to sound like or if you if you're getting lost in what's out there in terms of tutorials and stuff like that and I was like damn that's exactly what I've been struggling with and none of my teachers has really been able to give me a defined structure for that so I thought Benedict is the guy and he is awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, yeah thank you yeah it's like it's like lack of focus it's it's really and this is what what most people actually struggle with because to be honest all the information in the world that you could ever need is out there available to everyone Like you wouldn't have to go to a single, for most things actually, you wouldn't have to go to, to a school or study anything. You could in theory learn everything there is on your own. But people still don't do it because it's very, it's, it's super damn hard to do it yourself because you, you don't know what who to listen to what is actually applicable to your situation you 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 wouldn't pick the they put in the time to first curate all that information and, and make a plan for yourself and, and and it's very impossible or very 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 hard to do that yourself and also i remember when we met if you that's the the problem that very talented people have more than anything and that you had that problem to to Clint when we met you had you were sort of headed in all kinds of directions at the same time you were playing for bands you were doing session drumming or like touring drumming for bands and you kind of still do that sometimes big names also in the music industry which is awesome um you had a um i think also a podcast editing job um i think And you were going to to you you were studying you were interning and working for other producers you were playing in I don't know how many bands at the same time you were thinking about becoming like a producer or do remote mixing or you know and there would always be a new thing that comes up that you could actually do because you are talented enough to do all those things the problem is if you do all those things at the same time it's very hard to become really good at any of those things and then it's as you said you you can be in the top 10 20 percent in your city maybe but if you go on a, on a national level or even a worldwide level then it's going to be very very hard to be among the best if you don't have this clear focus on one thing that you really want to be be really good at and so this is a problem that very talented and, and people have a lot that are interested in a lot of different things and so it's not lack of talent it's not the it's not lack of, a, of work ethic or anything like that it's just you know just There's too many cool things you could possibly do, and it's like a, a lack of focus is really is really the thing. And so I'm very glad that you reached out, and we, it, 
I, I, it would be a lie to say that it was easy because, <laughs> you know, I tried to keep you, hold you accountable and keep you on track and stuff. But also I can understand that you want to try out different things. So, but I think you're on, a, on, the, on the right path there. And I think you kind of found things now that you are really good at and also enjoy. And you maybe found other things that you might be doing for now, but it's not something you're going to be doing forever. And I think it's becoming more clear every day. And so... So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that for people because I think you had everything you needed, but you needed it to be more clear, more focused, and you needed the accountability maybe also to do that. And and uh, so so yeah, but very cool. And I'm I'm glad you chose you chose me to be to be a, a part of this. And you also I know you have also you also have other mentors that help you with that, and and which is a good thing too because then you can compare different approaches and angles and pick the stuff that works for you. You know, and because there's no right or wrong or black or white in music production, it's all art, and there's different perspectives, different approaches and angles. Um, but having one main s- source of accountability and, and um, education is definitely beneficial to keep you on track. So, yeah. Very cool. Now, Robin, in your case, what, what was it like there? Because same story, you came to me and you already had more skills than most people, I think, uh, out there who would do a program like that. So you were pretty skilled. But what were you feel like was was still missing in your case. You were a little more focused maybe, but still, what was missing? Yeah, I think uh, structure is is uh, also a thing. And um, I think one of the most problems or one of the biggest problems uh, people, for people starting out is um, you always want to do the fun things. So <laughs> you, you love to do the mixing stuff, moving faders, loading plugins, whatever, making music. But what I, I learned from you, what kind of matters more is uh, the things which are, uh, you, you need to force yourself sometimes to do it. So you, you told us, uh, you told me to have a concrete plan, like a business plan. You have your structure in mixing. Uh, so there, there are steps I, um, I didn't do uh, because, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I was kind of lazy and I thought, okay, <laughs> I always heard of mix preparation, but why do I need this? It works anyways. But um, yeah, as I learn more and more, um, I uh, get the idea of having a, st- a structure, doing sometimes doing the things which are a bit, yeah, um, not the, the most fun parts. And um, yeah, I le- learned a lot from you there. And also, uh, I think what uh, Clint and I um, learned more um, in your coaching is uh, right now is the communication with other artists, um, how to to make kind of deals or how to reach for them. Um, yeah, to have that both sides, like having a goal there, and um, yeah, to. Just communication and structure there. Yeah, and, and the, the 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 interesting thing is that the more you focus on getting the the tedious stuff out of the way, the more time you have to actually do the fun stuff, and the more focused you can be on the fun stuff. That's the thing. You don't do the tedious stuff because because you do it because you want to free up time to be more creative, to focus, to be able to focus more on working directly with the artists on the art, and um, and to you know so. Uh, it's it's weird that you first have to put in the work in the on, in, on those things that um, you don't really want to do, so that you can then do more of the things that you want to do. And there's also this the saying that I keep repeating in various places where it's like the the pros never don't do the basics. I just love that quote. You know, there's some things that we, as you said, hmm, mix prep. Who needs that color coding? file structure, naming conventions, backup system, or whatever, like all these boring things. We always think like we can skip this. Um, it's not that important. But to be honest, the pros who have to handle a lot of work or who want to just be creatives most of the time and don't think about those things all the time, they never skip those. They never don't do those basics. They do them every single time because they want to get consistent results. They want to be efficient. They want to have more time to focus on on the important stuff. And if you don't do that, you constantly having to think about those tedious things because they have to get done anyways, but you have to put way more time into them than necessary. So I, I think you're you're absolutely right there. So, um, okay, but we have to clarify, I think there's two 
different things that we're talking about here because the main thing we do in the program is to help people make better recordings. The thing you were talking about is like an add-on that we have in the program, which is cool too. It's like talking about the business side of things. In the beginning, we kind of mixed it up a little bit, but I wanted to separate it from the main thing because it's not relevant for everybody. So I think most people listening right now are not really interested in the in the business side of things, but they are artists and want to make better art. So, um, But if you are someone who is interested in turning that into a business or even just a side hustle or something, then there is an add-on, like a business mastermind, where we meet every week and talk about business stuff exclusively now, which I love personally too, because it helps me too um, with, with my business. I love being in masterminds like that. And so we've been working on that side of things too. Uh, but those are kind of different things. When it comes to the, um, back, back to the, like the, the, the creative side of things and the art, what made you, I mean, you kind of explained it already, but um, did did you did you talk to each other before you joined the program, or like what what made you take the plunge to to doing this? Like, did you talk each other into it, or did you decide to oh, individually, yeah. <laughs> and then you figured out that both did it, or like how did that go? I talked him into it for sure. Awesome. Yes. My <laughs> my biggest fear would always be that Robin, who is who I know is such a talented musician, and he's been doing his audio job, which is great, but I was. Um, sort of <laughs> scared that he would um, miss the point at which he would still be able to redirect his career, whatever. And um, when I did the first call with you, I was like, damn, this is so awesome. Robin needs to do this because mm. that's awesome, finally going to be someone else to open his eyes and show him how capable he would be. And um, awesome. that's why I picked up the, the phone immediately and was like, yeah. Yeah. Robin, you should you should definitely do that. It's a, a free get to know call. You can still not do it, but please take one hour of your time and talk to this guy. And fortunately, he did. And he, yeah, I mean, and yeah, I was, uh, yeah, you were the the motivating factor there. And um, after my call with Benedict, the first call, uh, I was so glad that I took this opportunity to, yeah, to try this. And um, yeah, I mean. I'm very glad we did this. Yeah, <laughs> this is very cool. So now, so let's say the, thank you for the kind words, by the way, and also thank you for the referral, Clint. I had no idea that this was how it how it went. Actually, <laughs> I know that you. I kind of knew that you talked to each other, but like, yeah, um, I should have paid you for that. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, so um, now, roughly fourteen to sixteen months later, depending on like when you when you exactly started, early twenty twenty two, let's say. Um, what do things look like now, especially in those areas that you were struggling with? Like, how do you feel about your skill level and the quality of your recordings and mixes? And are there any any wins worth talking about? Like, what's the studio situation now and how have your skills developed? Not, not just in terms of, like, the coaching program, but in general. But if there's anything that you can uh, link back to the program, I'm obviously happy to hear that. But, like, what, what happened during these last one and a half years? Where, where do you feel you are now in, in terms of confidence and skill level? Okay, maybe I'm Go just... On. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first of all, and that's probably the most important part, we've been having our first clients that actually chose to work with us and um, were willing to pay us for the work because so far we've only been doing projects with friends or our own projects because we didn't feel confident um, enough, enough to offer mm. it to other people. But... That's the main thing. Sometimes you just, you're the one that's holding you back. And in the end, people are very happy with what you're able to do. And uh, that's probably the most valuable lesson we've learned is that it's not about what you feel, what your work is going to be compared to those Grammy Award winning engineers. But it's about if you can help and inspire other projects and that's especially the last thing we did. We were recording a band for a whole weekend and they surprisingly came with a song that they had already written off and they didn't enjoy playing live. And we were sort of the ones putting new life into it and all of them left our place uh, feeling optimistic about life <laughs> and you know they were really like the, the drummer bought himself new cymbals like the ones I had put on his kit when we were recording 
and um, they were all talking about they wanted to practice the parts and wanted to play that song now and they couldn't wait how it would be percepted by the audience live and we wouldn't have done that if we you know hadn't believed in ourselves in ourselves or if we hadn't thought that it you know that's the the main value if you if you can take the artist a step forward and it's not about being the next making them the next Billie Eilish or whatever <laughs> yeah and, and this might things like that happen as a result of the process and you can't really control that you can't control the outcome you can only control the process and what you do each day and how you communicate with artists and how you help them with their art as you said and if they become the like, mega stars or not is out of your control outside of your control you can only focus on your own actions each day and if you believe in yourself and you're confident and you build your skill level then you can increase the chances of that happening but it's also, I, to be honest, it's pretty damn cool just to be able to work on music every single day, even if you never win a Grammy or you're never in the, the Billboard charts or whatever. Like, I have a 10-year-plus professional music career right now. I've never worked a, a normal job, basically. And I've, I've never had a number one or, like, a platinum record or anything like that. But I think it's so damn cool that I get to work with all these good bands and, and exciting, cool people every single day. And I couldn't be happy about that. I think that's a real privilege. And... And so I'm glad you I'm glad you said that and I'm glad you're enjoying the process and and help you like helping artists bring their vision to life. Cool. And it takes the confidence to do that as you said. Great. Yeah. And regarding the skill level, I mean, we've already talked about this. I've been having a lot of stuff going on. So um my main thing and that's also one thing I'd like to add about the cooperation between Robin and I is that He's actually not the technical guy. Okay. That's okay. me. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. What he, he just said, he likes to push faders and do that. And I've okay. always sort of been the guy to do the yeah, the dirty work and the do the work. editing. Really? Nah. Yeah. Yeah, at least kind of. you know, Benedict <laughs> made Benedict made you edit drums for the first time, basically. But at this okay, point, wow. it sort of um makes sense to split up like that i mean obviously i'm trying to improve as a mixing um, engineer but since i've been editing drums for so many years now and i've been tuning and recording and tuning vocals um countless times so there's really no point especially with robin doing a full-time job whereas i'm just doing part-time job and still studying uh, it makes sense that I'm doing all the, that technical work and trying to be sort of Robin's assistant in terms of mixing. I mean, we've been recording those bands together just for him to get gain more um, experience with actually recording bands rather than actors. And um, But still, I've been doing the editing and sending him the tracks and he's been able to focus on the mix, which is a great uh, sort of split of work and well obviously we've both been working on those projects creatively and um yeah but yeah still okay cool okay cool it still makes sense though although i got that wrong but it still makes sense though because editing is is a technical thing but it is working on the performance so and what i always believe is that you or I, I was i always had the uh, the perception of that it's like that you clint are very you have a very good ear for like, yeah, performances, the music. It's without like diving too deep into like technical side of things. You can do that, and you can operate it off, of course. But I think having heard some of your more um, natural, raw, organic things that you did, like jazz, acoustic music, stuff like that, I like it. Just there's just no no denying that you are very very musical, very talented in that. And I think editing is. Although it's a technical skill set, it requires you to understand the performance, to understand what feels good and what doesn't, and to do it in a way that it actually helps the song and not just as a purely technical step. So it kind of still makes sense to me that you are kind of working on the performances and then Robin takes over and does the mixing, which you are also really good at, Robin. And I'm, you know, but you both could do both. But I think specializing in those things is is not a bad idea. And and so so yeah, that, that's that's cool. I mean, we have we have had pro uh, projects where I ended up doing the mix. It, it's always like we're trying to mix both, uh, to do mixes one each, and then compare and then sort of steal the the elements from each other. But uh, more often than not, Robin is gonna win those 
things, but especially when it comes to more um, acoustic singer-songwriter sort of stuff, um, I was actually quite, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we ended up picking my mixes over his. So there is sort of a focus that we both have in mixing and yeah. Yeah, but, yeah but I also I, have to say though that, that Robin put in a lot of time into mixing exercises and practices throughout the coaching also where you were kind of doing a lot of things at the same time, Clint, which is just as valuable, but it's like it was less focused than in, in, in Robin's case and just Robin put in the time to do a lot of mix practice and exercises. And so I think that helps with, with that, of course. And I think the more intuitive... Um, organic, loose type of mixes and like the more sparse arrangements and that sort of stuff, that fits you really well, Clint, because I feel like you can just do, you can just go with the flow and 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 just do whatever you f you hear and, and whatever you, like how, how you feel about the song and how you perceive it. And I, just, I think that fits you, suits you very well. Whereas Robin attacks the bigger projects with like the huge track count and the more heavy stuff and the more detailed work, maybe based because of the, the, the experience and, and work he put in. Um, during these past year or, or so, so yeah, and I mean it's it's not about uh, winning at this point. <laughs> no, we we cooperate, <laughs> and uh, we are constantly learning from each other. So I think that's a great thing. Also, a great thing that Clint can uh, show some some uh, tricks and hacks in me recording, maybe. Um, and on the other on the other hand, I can tell him a, a few things uh, regarding mixing. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a great thing that we can learn from each other in this corporate uh, corporate thing, and yeah, cool. So, so how how do you feel about your um, skill level now, Robin, at the moment? Um, I really think I really improved uh, during um, the last two years um, at this point because, as Clint said, I um, was kind of. <laughs> Um, I I just recorded voice actors, which is a great thing too. But um, to go out with a band, doing a whole record, um, setting mics up. I did this before, but uh, not in that sensitive and um, yeah focused way Clint does. So um, I learned a lot there. Um, I had a few um, editing uh, exercises Benedict you gave me so I learned a lot from there as well and uh, yeah when it comes to mixing um, where I brought um, some uh, stuff some uh, skills already before the coaching I think that now I'm I'm more structured I'm more uh, I have a plan before I even mix I know exactly or kind of exactly what I'm uh, reaching for. And uh, yeah, you kind of helped me um, to have, yeah, like uh, I said, a structure. And I don't have to um, do every every time start from the scratch. I have a plan and um, I know what I'm going for. And uh, yeah, I think this is what I really improved. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Now, what are some... Let's let's talk about your work. Actually, what are some projects currently, like some current projects you're working on, and what are or maybe past projects that you're proud of during the, this last year or so, and what are your plans for the next few months or years? Like, what are you working on in, in the studio at the moment? Uh, we've been working together with a sort of hair glam metal band from Germany, and we've done one song by them. They call it Crystal Steel. In case you want to look it up, and. Um, We've just been recording, or I have been recording drums with them last week. And so right now I'm uh, editing the tracks and we're trying to find new dates for the vocalist to come in. Uh, that band is actually sort of a self-recording artist. So they're tracking their guitars and bass themselves and they're producing the whole thing. So that's very cool because we... We can focus on sort of the overall bird's eye view and just get the drums right and um, and the vocals, which obviously are the most important part. And um, we've been also working with another hard rock slash metal band from Hamburg, um, Rising Northlight, where we are um, 
currently communicating about how we're gonna keep doing this so that's already i mean we're still on that but we're gonna keep working with them we have a prog rock band from hamburg as well where we're currently finishing the mix and we we're um finishing our own album together with uh <laughs> benedict who's mixing it so but yeah we have a few inquiries that we're taking care of at the moment but the most time we've been putting into setting up our website and well not the most time obviously nah, the most time dangerous <laughs> yeah no <laughs> that's probably just the last 24 yeah. hours <laughs> the professional engineers spent most time setting up their websites that's the reality people <laughs> yeah no no but um all of that business stuff is taken up yeah. some time but yeah it does um yeah we're we're trying to have our website online by the time this podcast comes out and um yeah robin you want to add something yeah and uh if we <laughs> quite a few projects will, that's really cool mm, and we will go more into social media stuff as well because that's a thing we um yeah let beside a bit over the over the past month and uh, we want to focus more on that uh on that yeah social media stuff as well and um, yeah but you can uh find us of course on social media and stuff yeah so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get to that we'll list all the links mm -hmm. and everything of course also in the show notes and, and you will mention it on the on the episode too so yeah and i think it's like you know you did the right thing you focused on the skills and the confidence and all of the, and the structure and all of that first before going out and doing like social media campaigns or like focusing on the business side of things. That's exactly the right order of things, right? There's too many studios out there already, too many people out there already advertising their studio services while not really knowing what they're doing or not at all in some cases. Like it's really, it's really like that. So I'm, I'm glad that you did it the other way around and now you can focus on bringing more people in and using your connections. And that is also something you did very well. You built real life collect connections with people, with artists within the music scene that you can now quote unquote use. It's always sounds so bad, but you can now like add value for those people and get value in return from those people and use these connections to build your your studio business and you can do it confidently because you know what you're doing and so this is exactly the way the way to go about it now okay these are a few few very cool projects you were working on there and i think i have to mention something clint you because this is like huge credits actually it's not recording related but you play drums for like pretty big bands you, play, you played a tour with uh set this car which is one of germany's biggest like punk rock bands and you played huge venues on a tour with i think it was rise against right so so you did that too which is incredible so if you're into punk rock you know who rise against is and and maybe even if you're not into punk rock you might know who they are and you might know it's at this car and you play drums for set this car on that tour and uh, you've got to know very cool people. You get to know the guys in Anti Flag and and you know a couple of other um, people, which is which I think is is huge. And it's not directly production credits, but it's still it should tell people that you know what you're doing and that you you're taking advice from people who are know who know what they're doing. And I think this is an asset you have, and we absolutely have to mention this here because that's something you can be super proud of. Yeah, I guess i am <laughs> <It was laughs> yeah the last few months were incredible incredible and in terms of life-changing experiences that was pretty pretty sick but yeah. yeah i'm very happy and now i'm trying to get my stuff back together but i'm still yeah. <laughs> back to the drums learning new songs for another band that i'm playing with now and um it's also taken off uh, taken up a lot of headspace and time of course so i'm um, for right now and benedict knows this i'm just focused on uh editing my tasks and let robin do the rest and um i'm trying to work on myself in all those other areas as soon as i'm done with the current live projects yeah yeah, and we'll still go through the all of the mixing action plans and stuff because you were telling me in the beginning that at some point you want to be a mixer and that's one of the main things you want to do for people. And so we're, we're going to get to that at some point. <laughs> yeah. There's no way around it. We're going to get to it. Yeah, and I'm going right. to keep annoying you until you do. But uh, as long as you're doing something that is fulfilling to you and that moves your career forward and that gets you in touch with more great artists and make helps you make inspiring music, then it's all, it's all good and I'm happy to change plans accordingly. That's the beauty of a coaching program versus just the course yeah thank um, you so for that 
Yeah, you're welcome. Now, how would you summarize, like in, in a few short sentences, maybe or a few short words, how would you summarize the benefits uh, of the the program, the community, the calls, you know, or anything else that comes up? Like, just for someone on on the fence of about joining that, like, what, how would you summarize that real quickly, and, and what what are the main benefits for you? Okay, let me maybe focus on what we've already known by the time we joined. So. The self-recording band part of it is absolutely amazing. I mean, I've been checking out a lot of other online resources like Nay the Mix and Pure Mix and my own studies in music school. And I have to say the the amount of knowledge and the condensity of the knowledge offered at the self-recording band is incredible. It's like, it's taken me years to get there. And I was like, hopefully there's going to be at least a few things in there that that I might not have known which there is, I guess there were a few points I hadn't known, although I did it for the focus and um, the mindset sort of stuff. But I have to say, if you if you want to know more about how to record yourself properly, it's all in there. It's amazing. Benedict has done a huge job putting all that knowledge together and structuring it. And um, then the other main thing for us is to give us the perspective and the optimism and the confidence to to actually do that and to actually be here and say, you know, we want to make this happen. And maybe in one or two years, Robin is going to reduce. No, he's actually probably reducing his job in the near future. But maybe we're both able to work uh, in the studio, in our own studio, in the near future, thanks to Benedict and all his tips. So it's incredible. So huge shout out at this point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much. Love to hear that. I really appreciate that. And it's just awesome to have someone that's gone through all those problems and phases and yeah, that's to get thing. that advice in, in a way that Benedict is able to offer them um, that advice. <laughs> yeah. So there's not really a question I've had where he he's not like, ah, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. That's <laughs> that's so me like five yeah. years ago or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing. And- and it's it's all so so personal. Um, if you're looking things up in the internet, uh, as Clint said, there are a lot of like courses, like nail the mix or YouTube tutorials for different stuff. But in this um, course, um, the coaching and this coaching program, um, you always have these uh, one-on-one calls, and um, you can always ask questions right ahead so you you got the chance to have feedback right away and in a very personal way and i think that's a big benefit uh, as well yeah Awesome. Thank, thank you so much. That's so cool to hear. Um, I want to talk about more, more about your, though, before we wrap this up. So what is it? We haven't talked a lot about like recording philosophy or the genres you're working in and like your personal um, angle and perspective on things. So what is it exactly that you're offering right now and who do you offer it for? Well, we're offering full production because um, we're able to record everything properly Um, although we end up recording drums and vocals mainly because that's i mean for those guitarists among the listeners they know that a lot of stuff can be done at home but still we we came to realize that with us next to the guitarist or instrumentalist whatever um, it might yield better results because Uh, There's episodes on that in the Self-Recording Band podcast regarding tuning and timing and also arrangement, of course. So our preferred method is guiding the band through the whole thing and to make sure that the patterns, the strumming patterns match the drum pattern and to make sure that the whole song is um, well thought out. And um, other than that, we like to uh, offer mixing and you know the whole the whole thing and our main genre would be heavy music i guess but i have to say that we've also been doing singer songwriter music and reggae sort of mu- i mean not that we put a, a main focus on that but since we got that complementary background um 
We might say that anything with guitars and that's not EDM or hip hop, that's we, point, we yeah. might be an option <laughs> to at least talk to. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. And, and what's your sort of um, style or like aesthetic or preference when you when it comes to working with people? Like how do you approach sessions? What's your aesthetic when sonically? And like who who are the people that would be a great, a perfect fit for you? And like who who should be um, reaching out to you if and and like yeah all all of that like in, in terms of like just your aesthetic because the the you, I know you have the talent I know you can do all the things you just mentioned but what is it exactly that you think um, makes are you that that you think you're really good at and that and, and that puts sort of a um, enables you to get the best out of out of an artist and enables you the, you to help them make the best piece of art like how do you approach this all and how do you what, what's your aesthetic there. Um, yes, as Clint told, um, we are really going for uh, looking for a pre-production so um, that we need or we ask the bands to give us their demos um, for the song they want to work on so that we can decide or at least suggest some things before even the recording starts that um, we don't waste a lot of time in recording uh, experimenting things which is fine but um, to have it uh, before that is a, a big thing I don't think many engineers do or offer um, for that uh, kind of kind of prize and um, yeah just uh, I think bands uh, which want to take their music more seriously, uh, which have a kind of goal for their music, not just uh, want to say, uh, let's say, um, we want to record our first um, record. Um, so we are, we are more into bands which already have some records, um, offer um, quality which could improve from our experience um, for further projects and yeah I think the pre-production thing is a is a thing uh, we offer like a special that's a special offer awesome yeah, yeah I, I totally agree and it's it's worth noting that um, you're focusing again on absolutely the right things here and because you put the music first you you work on you talk about the music you work on the songs the arrangements and all of that and it's not just a cookie cutter service where you like order a mix and then you take whatever they send you and send it back but you really want to make sure that it's the best piece of art those people can possibly make and whatever it takes to get there you are happy to do with your skill sets that you have and this this is really great because it's outcome focused it's results focused and it focuses on on how Helping the artists be the best version of themselves, and, and it's very personal and more than just this, yeah, this cookie cutter um, sort of style uh, of working that a lot of people do these days. So I really love that. It's tedious. It's not easy to do that. It requires a lot of like work on your end, a lot of flexibility, and a lot of also like the creative ability to even to even do that. And the that that's also why it's it comes in handy that you are great musicians yourselves, of course, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it. But I think that artists can benefit so much from working with people like you just because of that. And I would highly encourage people to reach out because I know what you can do, what you're capable of. And I know that people are in good hands if they reach out to you. So that's cool. Now, what is your, um, again, the, the, the aesthetic sort of thing, I want to touch on that real quick. I don't know if you have something like that, but some people are more on like the polished, huge radio sort of style um, side of the spectrum. Other people are more um, like the organic, raw, we record everything live type of guys, you know, and, and everything in between. So what are your personal preferences there, if there are any? or like, I think it really depends on the artist and their vision. But if we have to take sides on this, then it's definitely rather the polished sort of production, especially with me being very uh, careful with editing and making sure that everything's done right and Robin tending to go for huge sounding mixes. So um, it's not like we love records. For example, one of our favorite records is City of Evil by Avenged Sevenfold, which is, I mean, they don't use, they, I think they haven't used samples ever as as far as I'm concerned. It's It's a very raw uh, aesthetic which we also really enjoy but if we have to take sides on this it's definitely more the modern approach mm -hmm. 
But um, it helps that Andy Wallace mixes those records or makes those records. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's that's awesome. True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's cool because that's a person who can who who nails that balance between um, huge polished modern, but also sounding like a band. And I, I know there's very few people who can do it like Andy Wallace, and and you know, and so so I get that. That's really cool. Okay, so the more polished side of things, but you still want to hear a band, basically, and if possible. and For sure, so. for sure. <laughs> cool, G great. Now, what would you tell someone who's on the fence about hiring someone like you to help them make a cool record? Because I know for a fact that so many musicians are out there um, still thinking they don't need help. They think they can do it themselves because the knowledge is out there, because they've spent hours on YouTube. And I get that all the time. I talk to so many people who are who seem to be very confident about what they're doing, but when I listen to their stuff, they, like it's it's kind of harsh to say that, but a lot of people are delusional. A lot, a lot of people think that their stuff sounds amazing just because they have the tools. Um, and they are hesitant to reach out and get professional help, or or they want to do it themselves, and it's not that they don't appreciate it or whatever, but they they want to do it themselves, and it just never considered hiring someone to do a mix. Like, what would you tell someone like that? Because I think everyone highly benefit, like definitely benefits from from doing that. And if it's just even if it's just for comparison and, and the learning effect, but like, what would you tell someone thinking about reaching out, but they're not quite sure if it's worth it? I have to say, this might sound very weird, but um, now that we've been working with Benedict and uh, with a few other professionals in the industry, I personally feel like with my own projects, I would want to work and even do more parts of the process with those people because it's just, it's definitely going to raise you to the next level, um, trying to have a look into their brains and to see what your stuff could sound like if you weren't the only one working on it. And then especially the um, musical part about it. Like sometimes you can have a pre-production that does sound pretty cool, but the song is probably not that cool. And it really helps to have someone listen to it with fresh ears and also that's qualified to judge, not just like... Um, your girl or boyfriend listening to it and be like, ah, something doesn't sound right. That's also super valuable. But to have someone that can tell you what exactly is missing or what should be done differently is super value, valuable. And um, that's why I would definitely, especially the mix, because that's I'm <laughs> I'm guilty of that. You know, I can track and. Um, judge the musical part of things and I can edit and everything but I know for a fact if I hand my stuff to Robin it's gonna be way better in most of the cases and um, you shouldn't be I mean obviously there's a monetary side to that but it's definitely worth it and if you want to take your project to the next level um, you might want to consider looking for someone that could help you yeah, and, and also the budget side of things. And I mean, I keep saying that all the time. People are spending so much money on things that are much more stupid than their music, I think. And they don't even realize. So it's all a matter of priorities. Of course, not everybody has like 20K to produce a full-on professional record or whatever. But maybe you can afford to have one song mixed for a few hundred bucks, you know. Maybe you can do that as a band because I'm sure you've spent more money on, as I said, other things that are way more stupid than that. And uh, and if your music is really as important as you say it is, then I think you should at least, you should, you should do yourself a favor and at least try that once because there is a return. There, It's not for nothing. It's not a, just a cost. It is an investment in yourself and in your band and you will get new opportunities, better shows. Um, you know, you're gonna, a good recording and a good mix and a, a good piece of art that you put out there in the world has value and, and can potentially change people's lives. You know, people, you might, you never know who might listen to your music and, and his, th their lives could be changed by that. So it, there is a value, there is a return, it's absolutely worth it. And so I, I wholeheartedly uh, um, agree with you there. So anything you want to add to that, Robin? Um, yes, as Clint uh, told, the to have at least someone have another point of view for, for the project as we for ourselves do with uh, you, Benedict, mixing our stuff because um, bands or people tend to to hear things um, the way they always uh, how to how to say it um, they've got this one view on their projects yeah. and um, 
yeah, maybe sometimes it's a it's a good um, it's a good way to have someone else rethinking the whole thing to to have this kind of I don't know if it's a thing like a tunnel vision yeah. to um, cancel that. And another thing, um, we've I mean we know. Um, a lot of uh, musicians and and bands and and platforms. So um, if you um, are working with us, uh, we are also not only posting your stuff, reposting your projects. Um, we we could try to um, yeah to give other people in the music industry or to show other people your music. Maybe it's it's about finding new gigs or hey do you know which kind of um of uh guys do good uh, covers for for your for your booklets booklet covers so um i think you really benefit from um knowing or working with uh, someone who's in this this business and knows a lot of people um yeah they can reach for for yeah very good point stuff. Yeah, very good point. I haven't even thought about that. Your connections in the music industry are valuable, like that's crazy. And and it's like you can't ever promise anything there. So I would be very careful to promise anyone like anything beyond the result that you can personally provide. But if they are good and if if they're decent human beings, because that's also a requirement for any sort of referral. Like you you wouldn't refer or show someone to someone else if they are not um, cool to work with. But if you are, if your music is great and you are decent human beings, then there's a chance that Clinton Robin will show you work to people to other people in the industry and you never know what can come from that or they can put you in touch with their people in the network for as you said videos artwork um booking whatever whatever so i think that's actually a very very good asset that you have with your connections in this in this industry and so yeah good good point i haven't even thought about it yet. um awesome so yeah uh and and i have to say I love working with you on your record too. And I think it's very cool that you, even if you could, even despite the fact that you could do it yourselves, you're collaborating with others to do it. And I want to say that this is very common. So I collaborate with other artists, like with other engineers, mastering engineers, for example, all the time. Or I still, to to this day, even though I am full-time for like a decade plus and I feel pretty confident or very confident about my work, I am constantly in coaching programs myself, myself, constantly buying courses, constantly educating myself. I'm in various masterminds. I love to get input from other people. The learning never stops and the collaboration never stops. And just because you could do it all, all uh, on your own doesn't mean you should because um, there's always, I think you always benefit from collaborating with others and not doing things in a vacuum. So it's really cool that you do that. Now, finally, how can all those people that were, would be a great fit for you, like band, let's just sum it up, like rock bands, anyone who's making like handmade sort of acoustic instruments, music in a way, or like heavier bands, how can those people willing and ready to invest in themselves and, and, and excited about a collaboration like that, how can they find you, contact you and work with you? Yeah, so you can find us on Instagram, which is Ruby underscore records. Ruby, that's R double O B E Y. And we've also linked our personal profiles there where you can just check us out. And then our website is going to be ruby records.com. And like I said earlier, that should be online as of later this week. And um, yeah, we'll be posting all the stuff we're doing on the air and um, we'll be happy to hear from you if you're interested. Awesome. Really great. We'll put all of those links in the show notes, by the way. That's so good. if you go to the <laughs> selfrecordingband.com slash podcast and then just go to, I don't know the episode number yet, but if you go to that episode here, uh, you click on that in the podcast archive, you'll find all those links. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, or if you are uh, in your podcast app, just open up the show notes or the YouTube description and you'll find the links to to uh, Ruby Records and Clint and um, Robin's personal pages like personal social pages and then you can just reach out any preferred outreach me method are you happy with just chatting with people um, through socials or is there a contact form or one specific way people should reach out no we don't no. we don't mind anything awesome. works for us really cool yeah. perfect all right. Anything you want to add to this? Like, I'm I'm super stoked. This was a great, great um, conversation for me personally because, it, like, yeah, it's just exciting to to see 
the, the progress you've made and the, the things you've working on and, and the, the insights you've provided. I think it's very inspirational for people too. Anything you want to add personally to this? I, I hope you've, you've been able to gain something from our background and our struggles. And the main thing for me that I would want you to take away is that even if you feel like you're struggling or you don't know where to start, um, It's normal and you just need to find someone like Benedict to help you guide your and make your way and just try to get that clear goal in your head and then you should be fine and never be afraid to take on help. And um, there, even though there are a few people in this world that produce records on which they play every instrument, sing, write the songs, mix and master them and market them on TikTok. <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean that you have to be that person. And um, it's totally fine to be good at some stuff and make sure that they are as awesome as possible. And the most important thing is to put your stuff out <laughs> and not yeah. be working on them for ages. So, uh, yeah. So true. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's like um, the, the confidence, having a goal in mind, being focused, um, following a process and trusting that process and just keep continually, like keep putting in the work and being patient. If you do those things, there will be a result, promise. There's no way around that. You, can, you almost can't mess it up if you do that. If you know where you want to go, you put in the work, you're patient, you follow and trust the process and, um, and you're focused, then it will take you It will take you where you want to go eventually, and and thank you for saying that, uh, Clint. It's so so important that people end this comparison game, and this is true for all kinds for all different areas of life, but in, in music production as well. Just stop the comparison game. Don't compare yourself to the people on on social media because a you don't know if their lives are really like that. You don't know what it looks like behind the scenes, um, and, and b you don't have to be in the top. 2%. It's very cool to be in the top 20%. And you probably, if you're making music right now and you have songs on Spotify and you are, you know, and you're stoked about that and you have a hobby that you love and it's fulfilling, then you already are pretty in a pretty good spot, actually. And you pr are probably already ahead of most people. You just don't see those people post about it on social media. So I think it's really, really good that you said that. And, and, um, and yeah, uh, it's normal. The struggle is real. Everybody has it. And, uh, Thank you for that, Clint. It's cool. So uh, thank you again for coming on to this podcast. Now, if you listening to this and you want to work on the confidence and skill part of this and the process side of things, and you want to you wanna check out the, the stuff that Clint and Robin were mentioning here, then you can go to the surfrecordingband.com slash call. And I'm happy to do this first free call with you. And uh, all of the things that we've been talking about... Um, I'm there to guide you through this. So again, the selfrecordingband.com slash call. And once again, check out the show notes to go to Clint's and Robin's studio website. Very important. Do it. Reach out. They're cool. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks so much Thank for having yeah. us. And um, keep producing, keep making music, and yes. keep Good enjoying team. music. And well, keep enjoying yeah. doing music. <laughs> that's the most important thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Great. Absolutely. Cool. Then, thank you guys. Have a nice day and uh, bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.